Hello, and welcome to another episode of After School Kids Lab. Every week we post a fun activity that we're doing. It could be a craft, it could be a science experiment, or it could be a skill or a game. This week we are going to be learning different kinds of puzzles. There are many types of puzzles that exist in the world, but we're only going to learn about some of them today. Today we are going to be talking about puzzles, the wonderful inventions that test our knowledge and imagination. The most well-known type of puzzle is probably the jigsaw puzzle, but there are many different kinds of puzzles. The puzzles I am sharing today are classic mathematical and mechanical puzzles that have been around for decades and even centuries. The first puzzle is called the Tower or Towers of Hanoi. This is a mathematical puzzle that consists of three rods and a number of discs of different sizes, which can slide onto one of the rods. Alternatively, this puzzle can be played with paper circles of various sizes and a sheet of paper separated into three sections to act as the towers or rods. I have created a template you can print that is linked in this video's description, or you can draw and cut out your own pieces. The puzzle begins with the discs in a stack, in ascending size on one of the side rods. The goal of the puzzle is to move the entire stack to the rod on the opposite side while obeying the following rules. Only one disc can be moved at a time. Each move consists of taking the topmost disc from one of the stacks and placing it on top of another stack or on an empty rod. No larger disc may be placed on top of a smaller disc. This puzzle can be a bit tricky at first, so I am going to get you started with your Tower of Hanoi puzzle. And to be fair, this game was invented by a French mathematician named Edouard Luca in the 19th century. It is associated with a legend of a Hindu temple where the puzzle was supposedly used to increase the mental discipline of young priests. That may not be true, but it is true that this puzzle can be great for strengthening your mathematical skills. The key to solving the Tower of Hanoi puzzle is to look for patterns. You will notice that the same moves can be used over and over to get closer to your end goal. First, we are going to start with two discs. I place the smallest one on the middle rod and the next one on the farthest rod. Then I move the smallest disc on top of the other disc. Now we will start with three discs. I start by moving the smallest disc over to the farthest rod. Then I place the medium sized disc on the middle rod. Next, I move the smallest disc to the middle rod as well. Then the largest disc is placed on the farthest rod in its final position. The following move is to take the smallest disc and move it back to the original starting rod. Then, I place the medium-sized disc on the farthest rod in its final place. Last of all, I transfer the smallest disc to the farthest rod on top of the other discs to finish the puzzle. You may already notice a pattern is emerging that will enable you to complete the puzzle with even more discs. See how many times you can solve the Tower of Hanoi puzzle, adding an additional disc each time. Many of you might have some familiarity with the following puzzle we are learning about. It is called a tangram. This is a type of mechanical puzzle, also known as a tiling puzzle. You may have played with wooden tangram shapes before to create pictures or designs. The object of a tiling puzzle is to take a number of flat shapes and assemble them into a given larger shape without the pieces overlapping or leaving gaps. Most tangrams will only give you the outline of the final shape you need to create. Some tangrams form a basic shape like a square, or maybe a hexagon. Other tangrams may challenge the puzzle doer to form anything from a dog to a swan using the puzzle pieces. It is believed that tangrams originated in China in the late 18th century, so there has been a lot of time for people to come up with different variations of this puzzle. Another tiling puzzle is the tea puzzle. The oldest examples of this puzzle date back to the 19th century and are also of Chinese origin. This puzzle became popular in the early 1900s in the United States, and it has been sold as a classic puzzle game since then. You don't have to buy anything to try out this puzzle, of course. It can be done simply with paper. I have created a template, which is linked in this video's description. You can print it out, cut out the shapes, and begin. The goal of the puzzle doesn't sound very difficult. Just arrange the four shapes into the capital letter T. 
However, this puzzle is not so simple to solve. See if you can find a solution to this terrific puzzle. The last puzzle I will mention for this episode is called the Soma Cube. This is another mechanical puzzle. Instead of flat shapes, however, the puzzle is made up of 3D shapes. It was invented in 1933 by Pete Hine, a mathematician, inventor, designer, author, and poet. So this was just one of his accomplishments. Much like tangrams, the objective is easy to explain. The goal is to use the seven pieces made out of unit cubes to construct a 3x3x3 three by three by three unit cube. Each puzzle piece of the Soma cube is one of every possible combination of three or four unit cubes joined at their faces so that at least one inside corner is formed. It's hard to believe, but there are actually 240 distinct solutions of the Soma cube puzzle. You may want to see if you can figure out one of them, or maybe more. Of course, Soma cube puzzles are available to buy, but if you want a challenge, you can actually make your own. I have pasted a link to instructions from the New York Times on how to build your own Soma Cube puzzle. You will learn how to fold origami cubes called Sonobi modules to construct a homemade Soma Cube. So now it's time for me to ask you some questions. After all, this is After School Kids or Ask Lab. First of all, how many discs were you able to use successfully with the Tower of Hanoi puzzle? Also, do you think you could do the puzzle again with less moves? There is actually a mathematical equation that can determine the minimum or least amount of moves required to solve the puzzle, depending on how many discs you are using. This puzzle is also solvable with any number of discs. The trouble is that with too many discs, the number of moves required would eventually surpass your lifetime. Math is fascinating, right? Also, do you have any tangram shapes at home? What shapes or designs have you made before? Maybe you could create your own shape, trace it on paper, and challenge someone to solve your puzzle. Or you could challenge yourself to see if you can solve the puzzle a different way. Did you have any trouble completing any of the puzzles? If so, that's okay. Just remember that puzzles are supposed to challenge us. You can always revisit them another time. And trust me, some of these puzzles can be tricky even for adults. We would also like to know what was your favorite puzzle? Why did you like it more than the others? If you liked any of these puzzles, keep in mind that there is a world full of intriguing puzzles out there, including ones you can find in books at the Bettendorf Public Library. The puzzles I shared today were just a few well-known classics for puzzle enthusiasts. Last of all, let us know the answers to any of these questions and more by adding a photo, comment, or video to our Facebook page. We would love to hear about all of your after school kids lab experiences. We hope you enjoyed learning about different puzzles this week, and I hope you got a chance to do some of them yourself. Next week, we are going to be doing a card magic trick. Until then, bye.